This video focuses on creating community. I know from conversations with a lot of you over the summer, um, the thought of creating community in a fully or, or partly online class um, or in a hybrid classroom where students are masked was one of the things that you were most nervous about. Um, and from what I hear, I think it's going pretty well. Um, I think that people have found a lot of ways to um, build resilient, strong, friendly, warm classroom communities. Um, and I think that one of the things I want to do in this video is celebrate some of the successful strategies that I've heard. So as I think about creating community um, in this time of COVID and in this sort of strange circumstance in which we find ourselves, I think there are kind of three things um, to, to cover. Um, I think we can create community by building relationships, um, by being present with our students and for our students, and creating space for student agency within our courses. So to build an inviting classroom community, I think it's important to make relationship building um, an explicit goal of your course. Um, this is not something that's ever been an explicit goal of my courses, but um, when it's happened, things have gone so much better that I think it's probably worth making it more of an explicit goal for myself moving forward. Um, I think that there's some things that people are doing really successfully to um, build relationships and inviting classroom communities. Um, one is making sure to create space in your course to see each other. This is not usually a concern, right? We're usually in small college, center college classrooms, um, seeing each other all the time. Um, but under these circumstances, I've heard of some really successful use of tools like Flipgrid and videos, um, audio feedback in Moodle, um, and other ways to let people kind of see and hear each other um, integrated into other parts of the course because you're not necessarily always sitting in the same classroom looking at your whole face, right? Um, so, so creating space to see each other um, creating ways to keep in contact. Um, people have been using GroupMe and Slack as messaging apps that have spaces for students to ask questions as they would before or after a class period, um, but also to keep in touch with, with each other, ask and answer questions, uh, feel like everybody's united and connected, even if you can't all fit in your same classroom um, or you're seeing each other only over Zoom. Some folks have been using music or videos at the beginning of classes to kind of set the tone, right? Especially if you're teaching a Zoom class that day, um, it might be nice to have something for students to listen to or look at as um, they filter in. And sometimes that can relate to your course content. Um, if you're really cool and knowledgeable about music, you might choose a song that relates to that day's topic, um, but also kind of sets the tone and, and creates an opportunity for a little small talk. Um, I used a live video feed of an aquarium the other day, and that worked really nicely to kind of set a comfortable tone rather than everybody just kind of filtering in and shuffling around and looking awkward. Um, think about how your students are going to get to know each other. Um, breakout rooms in Zoom, of course, create a lot of opportunity for students to have small group discussions. And the most recent update of Zoom um, allows students to actually move themselves in and out of rooms. Um, so breakout rooms are a great way for students to see each other and speak in small groups. I've heard that some students really like being in groups or teams that last over the course of several weeks or even the whole block. Um, these small groups might be um, problem solving teams. They might be um, a small group that uh, has the same schedule for being in the classroom and on Zoom. If you're teaching a hybrid class where students don't always get to come to the classroom, having that group that kind of hangs together um, and moves among the modalities can help students get to know each other better. Um, in these compressed times. So, so think about how your students are going to get to know each other better in your course. And also create space for your full class to process the material and reflect on the course, but also just how things are going in general. 
um, I heard from somebody who is um, taking time every Friday to just have the class talk about what they learned, what worked, um, where they're struggling, what's going on with them. Um, and this person said that, 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 yeah, they were sacrificing some content for that, but that it was really pulling the class together in a way that felt really good. So um, you're creating a kind of shared group identity and group experience if you create space for this kind of uh, processing and reflection at regular intervals through your course. So be present. Again, this is something that we never really have had trouble with. Um, we're in our offices, students are around, they see us on campus, um, in our lives at Cowan. Um, in a COVID environment, and especially in an online environment, it can be harder for students to see you as a person um, outside of just the content. And so letting your personality come into office hours or the class or the videos that you make, uh, making mistakes and not necessarily feeling like you need to edit that out, but being a person um, in the context of your class, I think is really powerful for students. Um, and then creating spaces where you're present with them. So um, if you're doing a lot of asynchronous components, um, maybe thinking about how you can be present during office hours, um, meet them outside, be on the messaging app or in the discussion boards, um, because I think students really crave our presence and that relationship that they're forming with us, um, just like my cat likes to be present. Um, I've heard from students that they enjoy a balance of asynchronous components that let, let them be flexible um, and work a little bit on their own time or at their own pace. But then what they miss about, um, they miss when they're, they're doing those asynchronous components is the ability to interact and collaborate with their class in real time. Um, and so they really appreciate kind of collaborative synchronous components to the classes as well. Um, and I think that structures that balance those two components well um, can be really effective. And then finally, I think a way to build community in the classroom is to create space for student agency. Um, one way that people have been doing that is by posting their syllabus on Moodle through the perusal plugin. Um, students can actually annotate the syllabus together. Um, perhaps co-creating policies um, or discussing the reasons why things are the way that they are um, and how students might want to, um, to make suggestions about them, um, give students a sense of ownership over the structure of the course, um, letting students choose from um, different ways to approach an assignment, right? Maybe they can make an audio post on the discussion forum. Maybe they can make a written post. Maybe they can make a video. Um, they're practicing some of the same skills in all three of those, but you're letting them choose which one feels most comfortable to them. Um, and that gives them a sense of kind of choice and agency um, in the course and helps them to feel like they kind of co-own their learning or own their learning um, and own who they are in the classroom. So I think that um, the kinds of classroom communities that I've been hearing about from you and from, um, from the students make me really confident that uh, this, this question that everybody was so nervous about in the spring, how am I gonna create community in a fall class when we don't already know each other, um, has been one that you've really found some successful solutions to. Um, the CTL is here to help, but um, I think that this is an area in which we are doing strong work um, as the fall progresses.